do we save in the planet? Uh, it's not intuitive yet to us to understand us as part of the ecosystem, part of the planet. So when we say, for example, when we say no to shark's fin soup, we do so in an understanding of the place, uh, the, the web of life, as the stuff that uh, sharks uh, do in the oceans uh, and our link to them uh, within the ecosystem. So once you see the world as a system, you begin to understand uh, unintended consequences. And now we get to the corporate bit, uh, and I'm, I'm really going fast here. So this is hot off the press. This is uh, from McKinsey. Uh, August, uh, oh, this month, which says that the next environmental issue for business is um, biodiversity, and we'll be hearing more and more about biodiversity. What is interesting about this survey by McKinsey is that 59%, uh, nearly 60% of the corporates that were interviewed began to say that they saw this environmental issue as an opportunity compared to the 2007 survey when it was about climate change, when uh, less than 30% of corporates saw this as, uh, as an opportunity. And so there's, a, there, there's been a shift in the corporate sector to see uh, this more holistically. Uh, this is uh, an article in the Harvard Business Review. Whoops. Uh, that says, uh, it, it remarks that business history is punctuated by fundamental shifts in the competitive landmark, uh, landscape that create inescapable threats and game-changing opportunities. And what they say is, uh, sustainability is an emerging business megatrend, like electrification, mass production, the quality movement, that's TQM, and the introduction of IT into business processes that will profoundly affect companies' competitiveness and even their survival. And of course, the reason is that there are now a lot of companies, well, not a huge amount, it's still a small percentage, but there are a lot of companies who have been in the sustainability game a long time. I'm just gonna give you, and we could have used um, uh, any number of examples, I'm just gonna give you one. Uh, this is Ray Anderson, he started a company uh, that's all, uh, uh, carpet in the United States. It was a billion dollar company until he found uh, sustainability. That's his latest book in which he, write, in which he wrote, um, when we used to hear the word environment, we thought costs. But the trade-offs we are told we must make between financial success and environmental success are just plain false. From 1996 through to 2008, 1996 was when they started on the sustainability trend, my business has cut its net greenhouse gas emissions by 71% in absolute tons. Now I just put that into context with the, the Kyoto Protocol that asked for a cut of 7% reductions by 2012 and everybody was com complaining. And here is a company on its own that has cut uh, its emissions by 71% while sales increased by two-thirds and earnings doubled. Profit margins expanded while greenhouse gas intensity relative to sales declined 82%. Uh, our consumption of fossil fuels, carpet is very fossil fuel intensive. Our consumption of fossil fuels per square yard of carpet is down 60%. Waste elimination measures have put a cumulative 405 million US dollars of avoided costs back into our pockets. Sustainability has proven to be the most powerful marketplace differentiator I have known. And increasingly, there are more and more examples of this uh, going on. And so for, for them, it's very clear uh, what you see. They see sustainability used strategically as a huge business opportunity. Uh, just another point uh, brought up by uh, the Harvard Business Review report. They say, most executives actually know that how they respond to the challenge of sustainability will profoundly affect the competitiveness and perhaps even survival of their organizations. Yet most are flailing around, launching at, hodgepodge, at a hodgepodge of initiatives without any overarching vision or plan. And in fact, the uh, Executive editor of The Economist, Daniel Franklin, wrote this uh, 
uh, a few months earlier, many companies pretend that their sustainability strategy runs deeper than it really does. It has become almost obligatory for executives to complain that CSI has become part of the DNA. In truth, the activities that go under, sustainable, under the sustainability banner are a hodgepodge, they like this word, hodgepodge, uh, of pet projects at best tenuously related to uh, core business. And so if you do, um, thank you, uh, so if you do uh, approach sustainability as a strategy, then you need a good plan that can execute it. Um, and I'm just going to do, show you some of the things. I just want to finish with two pictures as I scroll through these slides, which obviously I was, had too many of. I hope they're worth waiting for. Next slide. The first is this. This is a bowl of fungus, which you might remember from your student days. Uh, if, you put, if you give fungus uh, its food, in this case a piece of bread, uh, and a bit of oxygen and a bit of water, you will create <clears throat> a flourishing economy, a flourishing a uh, load of fungus, which will eventually die uh, in its own excrement. And in a sense, that is where we are as a species. Uh, resource depletion and the products of our uh, economy. Uh, and the question really is, are we more intelligent than fungus? And my final picture uh, is this man, of course, his iconic uh, phrase was, um, as you know, uh, it was not, uh, I have a complaint, or I have a critique of a really important problem, or I have a proposal, but it was, of course, I have a dream. And dreaming really is something that we need to do now. Uh, these are critical moments in uh, our history, but I think it is the most exciting time to be alive with all these challenges uh, facing us and the chance, the chance to do something about them. And that requires some dreaming. So uh, dreaming uh, that of course linked to indicators, good indicators that will tell us where we're going. And so with that, uh, I will wish you uh, sweet dreams and um,